Hey everybody, uh, welcome back to another interview today. Today, today I have Mr. Malcolm Ingram himself uh, with us. Uh, don't, I really uh, thank you, Malcolm, so much for doing this interview with me today. I really thank you for it. having me. Totally, man. Th thank you for making the time for for this day. Uh, so we, we, again, we we got you out here. We're here to talk about the uh, the clerk interview. I mean, the, ah! documentary, the documentary. Uh, that is supposed to be coming out uh, September 26th to, on Blu-ray. And uh, I guess you guys are also finding, finding a way to uh, manufacture VHS tapes again. Heck yeah, we did. <laughs> Look at what a novice I am. I love it. <laughs> hey, it's, it's, all, it's all part of the thing. Uh, I'm a so novice. I'm a total novice. What uh I don't, like I was the one guy like yeah I got it's dirty <laughs> though I'm kinda it looks like I'm framing for the posters so I should kind of sit. <laughs> I'm so sorry uh, about that. So between between the you guys doing a physical release for this, um give me give me a little bit of um information on uh Merc Mercantile Instinct and you Mer know back background on that. Mercantile Instinct is just a company I, I decided to open like We've been, um, like, I, I've been making movies for a long time, and, and, and essentially, like, I had normal releases for all of my movies up until a movie called Bear Nation that came out in 2010. And after that, like, everything kind of changed. Um, distribution's always kind of in flux and changing, this and that. But now, like, what happened in the music industry is now happening in the film industry, and it's it's the wild west. Nobody really knows what's going on. I mean, um, you know, the studios are you know like the stuff that's going Warner Brothers. Like, it's just like distribution seems to be really shaky right now. And I was like, um, I, I went through some some experiences in releasing my own stuff where I was just like. Um, I was really unhappy with the way things were going, so um, I was like, "Forget it, man! I'll I'll, uh, I'll put my money where my mouth is, and I'll try and put them out myself." So I was just like, "How hard is it to kind of just contact people? See how nice pro I am? Like, literally, I've got this." Um, yeah, so I decided to. Um, to just contact like uh, um, you know manufacturers is like I'll, I'll brick and mortar it like online. Right. I'll be like, this is my store. Like I'm, we're not really dealing with Amazon or anybody right now. It's just like, do you want a copy of you know this movie Clerk that I made, special edition Blu-ray with like all of, all of the goodies? Well, Mercantile Instincts is the place that's selling it. Uh, you, you were talking about, you know, just distribution and, and physical media. Um, and, you know, I'm still still a young man myself. Um, I, I still come from, and I, and I think it's, I think it has a lot to do with like the collector in me, you know, because I, you know, I collect comic books and you know stuff like that, where I, I kind of need that tangible object to be like, okay, I have this ownership of a thing. What else uh, you collect? Um, I, manga. Uh, statues, figures, uh, comics. What's your uh, favorite thing to collect? Probably, I would say a lot of like the comic figures and like my, and anime figures that I that I have. Uh, they're expensive, uh, but it's, it's been like my. You know, it's funny. I mean, because I believe like the, a chemical gets released when you buy stuff. Like collector mentality. Like it, it's like. Um... I don't want to say something as strong as addiction, but essentially there is kind of a, a reward you get when you find something like when, you know, like collecting like the hunt, it's, it's so much fun. Right. Like, you know what I'm collecting right now? The most random thing in the world. What's that? I'm collecting CDs. Okay. You know why? Cause essentially like I was a vinyl guy for the longest, like I was a vinyl guy because like, like when I was young, that's what you listened to was records, and then all of a sudden, being a vinyl guy became a thing, and like my record collection, its value grew exponentially. But it's just like it takes up so much room, right? And then there was a certain point where I was just like, 
I heard record prices are going wild, and I just I was just like, I wonder what it's like out there. So I was lazy about it, but I took 50 records that I knew were kind of good, but nothing that I would miss. Like no, none of my favorites or anything. But so I grabbed 50 records and I brought them to a used record store. I was like, what do you give me for these? They're like a thousand dollars for like 50 records. Wow. And I was like, give me the thousand dollars. But it's like, I don't want to collect records like that's. It's just like, it's so expensive. And it's just right. kind of like, it's not, like, it, when things get that expensive, it's just not fun. Like, and it's like, the thing with CDs is just kind of like, they're so cheap, but there's still stuff like, that's hard to find. Like, I mean, I'm really into like, you know, the old 80s bands like Husker Du and all that kind of stuff. And it's like, if I could find a Husker Du CD, it's like uh, you know I'm 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 fulfilling that need of the hunt, like of you know of, of the collector mentality, and that's kind of that very much of that, that very much has kind of influenced how my attitude about um, Mercantile Instinct. Like we're not on Amazon, like like I'm you know I'm not saying it will never be on Amazon, but like my interest is just like. No nah, man, like if you want to find this Blu-ray of Clark, it's out there. But like you got to do a bit of work to find it. You can't just go to Amazon and type for the Blu-ray. You got to, you know, you got to come kind of find us. We're out here, and we got a really good Blu-ray. But that's mm-hmm. I, I don't know. It's that's the way it used to have to be, right? Like that's the way, you know, like that's. You know, before everything became available everywhere, you had to work a little to get stuff, and I like that. I think it's fun. Yeah, like well, like you were saying, like you know, st- you know, without using the word hoarder, <laughs> um, you know, like that 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 mentality, like you said, like that dopamine, like when you get something new, like when you get that package that you know is coming to your door, um, you know. Now, my, I think also with me too, collecting, you know, movies and TV shows. Now we're in this age of streaming where they can take and remove an episode anytime they want. If somebody does something or, you know, an actor does something crazy or whatever, or if the content is no longer, you know, you know, viewable at that point in time anymore, they remove it, which I, you know, you know, understandably so from, from their business, you know, point of view, but as an owner, you, you, as somebody that collects, you want everything as it, as it was. Um, so like TV shows now they're like, okay, man, there's 10 episodes missing, or, you know, they just remove this entire part of this movie. <laughs> you know, the, you know, the weirdest one they ever did that one for. And I was like, is this like the Simpsons when they released, when they, they pulled the, um, the Michael Jack- Michael Jackson. Jack- yeah. I'm kind of like, like. Michael Jackson's never been charged with any crime. Like, essentially, right. like, there's a lot of belief that people feel about, um, you know, what he did or whatever, but he's never been charged with anything. And, like, for, for them to kind of, like, like, censor him from, like, I don't know. That's when, like, I, like, I love The Simpsons to death, but that was one time I was, like, I don't know, like, really? Like, you're going to... Like then you know maybe you want to like go think take in like a poo whatever episode if you right. like how where does it start like where does it start where does it stop so yeah it, it, but it, like, it, that's the thing about physical media is that like like once it's yours they can't take it from you it's yours I mean you still got to have the device to play it on but you know <laughs> this draw's been around DVDs been around longer than I thought they ever would have <laughs> like like thirty years or so like I, I mean like- the thing about Dude, like I can't believe I got like I can't believe I could make a VHS. Like that was the weirdest thing ever to me. That you could still get a VHS made of your movie. So like I don't know, but it's just like I'm a total collector nerd. Like like it, it, it's collecting has been so, it's been part of my fabric since you know since I was a kid. Um, you know I've collected you know movie I've collected so many dopey things and like I like it. And I, I and I, I like the discovery part. And like you said, like you said, like the kind of excitement of finding a package. Right. The thing about it is, is that like, like it's more fun to actually just find the item. 
like you know be excited about a package coming you know it's going to be there and stuff like yeah like the, the you know that whole, the amazon mentality that like yeah there's gonna be packages waiting for bringing it home but like the, the work to find something just be like oh there this exists i didn't know that existed like there's somebody out there who lo loves kevin smith that loves the movie clerk um because you know because of kevin because the documentary has no idea that vhs exists somewhere and it's just like he'll find him with it, it, what clerk exists in vhs and if just one person has that experience like then that's that's awesome like, that's what it's about right it's about kind of like i know the world's a pretty like i don't want to be hippy dippy the world's been getting real negative lately and it's just like i don't know as i get older i'm like i want to have fun like that's the most important thing i just want to have fun with stuff like making money is great and all that stuff is great too but sometimes just like I don't know. And Mercantile Instinct, the whole idea, it just it, the whole idea is just to have fun, see how far we go with it. Like, um, again, like, if you want a blue, if you want a Blu-ray of Clerk um, with all those extras, we're the only place you can get it. And and to me, that's fun. Look, uh, and, 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 you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm glad that, that you, you know, you, you still have the, not only the, the passion for this movie, um, you know, we were just talking about the distribution for it because you know now every, everything is like okay, streaming services first, everything else is secondary now. Um, you know, this, this you know, Clerk is, is streaming on like Tubi and like other other places that you can watch it. Um, and you know, just to see like all the passion behind that that documentary um, of you know, of course, you know, Kevin and, and Clerks and you know how you know that just skyrocketed so many people, different people to live and, and, and so much more. Um, it, it was just, it's just a great, like, it's just a great experience, but we're talking about, you know, you, you know, being able to, you know, launch off Mercantile Instinct and, and the distribution. Now is, is the plan to start here with the documentary and kind of work your way back through the various other movies you've done or just movie, just pick up different licenses for movies in general. Oh, no, no, no. Cause I, I mean, I have a cat. The thing about it is, is that like, I mean, when I first started in this business, like making movies, like in the '90s, like you know, I have a v, you know, I have a VHS copy of my first two movies. They released on on a DVD, but then like everything kind of went crazy, and like I didn't even like uh, I didn't end up selling like three of my last movies just because like. The offers, like they had great runs on the festival. They, like you know, they they played the festival circuit, um, but they just kind of like there was no way to properly get them out there. Like it's 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 a tough market. Like I feel I feel sympathy for a distributor because it's just like there's just so much out there. Yeah, but, it's, it's almost oversaturated a little bit. Like it's it's hard to find stuff. Like unless unless you know we look oh, for yeah. it. But. So I was just kind of like, um, like, so now, so I, I decided not to kind of sell my stuff. Like, I was just kind of like, you know, I did a documentary on, um, on basically this, this small city's love of the movie Phantom of the Paradise. And I did a documentary on the Continental Baths in New York. Both of those movies are like, they're not it's not an urgent story that needs to be told now it's like well no these are wonderful stories that exist they've now been documented and like when the time comes they'll come out and that's how they'll find their audience they're like there was no kind of I, like it has to be done organically because like unless you have some monster company behind you getting a movie out there right now is impossible oh for but sure if you know but with me if I'm controlling it, then I could do like, I've got special ideas about how I'm going to get it out there and give, you know, I, you know, I could, you know, focus my time and attention on how properly, you know, present the movie. And I think that like, I, I know the audience, those movies better than a distributor. And with a distributor, you give up so much. Um, it's just like, so I'm just kind of, risking it like you know I'm, I'm doing it myself i'm just kind of and like you know kevin smith is a guy who i've kind of um 
followed his career. I've been, you know, a part of his life for a long time now. And right. I've seen how he's done it. And he's like, he's, he's a real DIY man himself. So for me to kind of like, it got to a point where it was like, why am I, why work for a distributor? Why work with a distributor who basically like can't give the attention to the title that he needs to get out there? Right. And it's, um, it's a, and basically, you know, and I feel, of course, it deserves to get out there. So who's going to work harder than me? Absolutely. Uh, well, well, last question. Um, I'm here for it. <laughs> So as, as you're talking about the Blu-ray and the, and the VHS, how, how are you are you sacrificing kind of the quality of the movie by putting it on the VHS tape? Oh hell yeah! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, but, that, but, that's what, but that's not what it's but that's not what it's about, right? It, it's kind of like that's the experience. That's the way somebody look. I, I saw some of like. I saw like some of the greatest movies in history for the first time on VHS. Right. Can't you know, I can't change that. And I don't know if I'd change it if I would. It's just like that was the format for a long time. And that was not a superior format at all. Like no. it's kinda <laughs> like uh it's not like they're jumping back to eight track. Like eight track was one of the worst formats ever. Um <laughs> But no, I mean, like VHS has its flaws. I'm certainly not. It's like yeah. I'm certainly not like no, no, no. It's better than DVD or Blu-ray. It's not. VHS quality is inferior, but it's about the experience. Yeah, I, and I uh, and and that's enough, right? Like, like uh, I don't know. Like as I was saying earlier, like this is the dopiest thing in the world. But um, when I was a kid. The first, the first, the first movie I owned, like I was a movie nerd from the time I was six. Um, but the first movie I owned was uh, I bought a used copy of Friday Thirteenth Part Two, probably in like nineteen eighty five, maybe. And like the concept of owning a movie was so heavy for me that I, I, I slept with it. Like I literally slept with this. <laughs> like beat up copy of Friday Thirteenth Part Two, just because I thought it was incredible that I owned a movie. Like it was now my I could play anytime I want. That was a thrill for me. So that, I mean that 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 was my pause. Like those are the positive memories I have with physical media. Well, look, Malcolm, I, I appreciate you so much for taking the time, going on camera, doing this interview with me today. Um, Can I'm you believe go, I'm so bad at it? Like literally, like the angle. You did a good job. <laughs> you're, you're you're professionally like centered and all that stuff. Yeah. And I'm just like woo. <laughs> so thank you for your patience, sir, for no, my no, uh, no, lack no, of professionalism. Uh, one one more time before we get out of here, just let the the people know where they can buy your movie and uh and and you know uh, when they can buy it at www.mercantileinstinct.com, and that's the only place they can buy it. And it's coming out the 26th of September. Yes, sir. Ray VHS. Well, you heard it here, folks. Uh, you heard it here first. Um, go ahead and buy your copy. Please uh, get this get this company started. Let's get some more of this physical music going. Uh, Give this please. chump some change. <laughs> Help him out. <laughs> and uh, on that, we uh, we appreciate you. Thank you so much, Malcolm. And uh, hope Thank you, you so day. much, man. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.